up, everybody? Welcome to Tuesday night, NWSL Live. I'm Jordan Angeli. So excited you guys have joined us here for this fun Tuesday night. Now, the, the guests we have are already making me laugh. They're backstage. I'm going to bring them in in a second. I'm going to bring Jeff Kasuf in first. And no, no Lori Lindsay tonight, Jeff. We are without our trusted Lori. She is on a road trip. Cannot make it. But we're going to hold down the fort, I think. I think we'll make it. We'll manage. We'll make it. Lori's been busy. She's got a lot of games. We've had uh, seven game nights and ten, ten nights, yeah. I think. So we're, that's busy. all we're hearing is just Lori Lindsay, right? <laughs> which we can't complain. So um, this is going to be a fun one. We've seen NWSL go through a lot of changes in the past few years, uh, but we're bringing some OGs on tonight, some originals from OL Rain. I'm excited, Jeff, to welcome in. They came in as Lulock. It's Lauren Barnes. That's <laughs> Fishlock. Um, I love this. Well, how are you guys? You're already laughing. You're making me laugh behind the scenes. I wish everybody could see you just posing before getting ready to go. Um, welcome. How are you? <laughs> Lulock on Twitch. Follow them. Lulock on Twitch. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, first off, Lauren, happy birthday. Yeah, did you have a good day? What did you guys do? The game, so they stayed for the next day. And then um, I just did some stuff with the girls because we're right on the water. So we played spike ball and had some volleyball tournaments going on. So it was good. Did you play spike ball? I didn't. <laughs> a little old. <laughs> She's lying. She didn't play. She won. I there, yeah, support. Um, who were the spike ball champs then if, if you weren't participating? McNabb. Yeah, I would never play against McNabb. Yeah. McNabb well. and Zane were partners, and I think they, they took the, so took the cup home. Sophia tried to get in, but she just it wasn't quite her day. She just had an off day with the spike ball. Yeah. <laughs> she was better at volleyball. Yeah, she was actually good at volleyball. Okay. All right, at least she gets half of it. Um, well, everybody kind of knows you, but the, the way I wanted to bring you into this was – I want you guys to introduce each other. I want you guys to tell each, tell everybody out there what you think of this person. Who, uh, Lauren, you go first. Who's Jess on the field? Who is she off the field? Describe your friend here. Be nice. Yeah, my sister. Um, we always laugh because we get the photos after the game from our photographer, and I would describe her as <laughs> dramatic and passionate. <laughs> Because every photo is so funny. Like, if there's no context to the yeah, photos, you'd be like, are you okay? Mm -hmm. it's, true. it's true. So, yeah, true. that's her on the field. She's very passionate as a person off the field as well. Um, it's from Wales. Comes from a big family um, that are all very passionate about soccer as well. Can I tell them the story about the man of the match that your mom said? Yeah, you can. <laughs> so, I got given man of the match. <laughs> For whatever reason, I should have not gotten it. Um, but we were on the phone with her mom after, and she's like, "Do not know why they gave you man of the match. You <laughs> at least your seven passes, eight passes was going off." And I'm like, "I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that is our family to a T. She's a true Jessica supporter. <laughs> she's very honest. <laughs> the best way, best way to be. Likes a little bit of constructive feedback. Um, okay. I was like, "Mom, it's her birthday. Can you just?" be a little bit nice and she was like well that's why she got it then <laughs> oh my gosh that is hilarious um, Both I love that yeah. Yeah. yeah and a good story to like top it off okay now now your turn jess Who, who's lauren um <laughs> lauren is um i don't know like one she's great obviously she is the epitome of the rain for one, both on and off the field, actually, she brings us like a calmness when we're, we're on the field. And I always say that like when she's playing and when she's like kind of when she's on it, which is 99.9% .9 of the time, um, everybody's job is a lot easier because she just is just so, you know, chill and calm, but also so effective, runs a line. Uh, I never have to worry about anything behind me when Lulu's playing. I just ignore it and I'm just like she's fine she's good um and when it's not I also know <laughs> and when Passionate. yeah you know that no point one percent that she's just you know away with the fairies somewhere um she gets a little look <laughs> mm -hmm. 
<laughs> yeah, it's that side eye. But off the field, I think everybody knows exactly who Lulu is off the field and what she wants to do and what she's trying to create, you know, a better, a better world for everybody. Um, and she just brings such love and, and compassion. Um, very, very lucky that I've Aww. met her. And we're like chalk and cheese, kind of. We're like so yeah. different, but also so it's similar. It is, it is crazy. No, go on. Well, obviously, it's my birthday yesterday, and like <laughs> I'm sweating because yeah. this story. But like, <laughs> obviously, she's like trying to play and doesn't want to do all this stuff. But like, everyone on the team was texting her, and she's like. I hate that everyone like enjoys your company because she's like, I feel so stressed about everything. <laughs> Every single day I get like a text message from somebody else on the team saying, are we going to do this? Like, what are you planning? Like, what are you doing? And I'm like, not doing anything. I'm like, Lou, I'm not actually doing anything for your birthday, but I feel now like I'm a <laughs> person because everybody seems to think I should be doing something for your birthday. I was like, I don't even have a <laughs> Like, I don't have a card, so that's where I'm at. But everybody <laughs> wants to do something. So then I was just delegated as the experienced one. I said to one of the girls, you plan something, she'll love it, it'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> so you got spike ball on the waters, is what it ended up being. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. so great. Um, no, I love that. You you recently posted to Jess uh, Instagram post that said, my day one, it was a picture of you too. Was it really from day one? Did you guys just like hit it off that first day? Oh, God. Well, actually, <laughs> we met we met in Japan because we pre -season did year one preseason year one oh, and i forgot you guys went to japan yeah, yeah. whoa <laughs> yeah we went to japan and it was never again it will never <laughs> ever happen again and yeah we were both very different we were laughing about it the other day actually because we were younger then obviously and we looked very different and i had like <laughs> she had like a rat tail, rat tail. and then like hair coming down <laughs> and we, it was just coming off of college probably just no it took a year off okay, so so great. you could really tell and she, just a little bit bigger just you know just but she had these like hamster cheeks so we had a nickname for each other at the time like she called me a rat's tail and i called her hamster cheeks but, like we didn't know each other well enough <laughs> So it was like secret names, oh. and then when we started talking, we I, we were like, "Look, I have something to tell you. Like, I've been calling you hamster. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I've been calling you rat tail. Like, it's made we made to be friends. Yeah. Yes. So we have like a ongoing joke. Um, if we survived year one, like you can survive oh. anything. Yeah, hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. It's too good. Too good. Well, uh, Lauren. Uh, you're at 150 appearances. Well, over that now from, from that day one, um, you sat on that 149 for just about a year and a half or so that that's, that's all for regular season. Yeah. Um, you know, take us back to, to 2013, maybe that those days of, of calling each other, was it rat's tail and hamster cheek? I mean, did, did, did you, did you, did you envision kind of, um, I don't know. I mean, the, the idea of staying in one place, of, of kind of putting down roots like this, of, of playing into 2021. Um, I did not foresee this by any means. Um, I am not like eat, sleep, breathe soccer by any means. I have a lot of things that I do outside that brings me a lot of joy. Um, I am super competitive, though, and love when I'm out there. Um, but yeah, I took a year off before coming back into the NWSL because the WPS folded and there's kind of nothing really in between. There's like a few leagues going around, but um, I decided to coach instead. Um, so yeah, coming back in, I definitely didn't think that that was going to be, you know, my future being in one area, especially with how, you know, our league works. There's a lot of trades. You can get traded at any time. Um, so I've been really grateful and fortunate to be able to be in Seattle be on a really competitive club for the past nine years. Um, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else as well. I've been so happy with how my career has panned out. Um, and yeah, just what this club stands for, the players and, you know, the friendships I've made that have come with it has been something that's like most fulfilling that I've taken away. 
um, this far. Um, hopefully to get in a championship. <laughs> We've grinded out a lot of years of almost. So, <laughs> um, yeah, we're hoping to still kind yeah. of, you know, stay competitive and get up there. But, yeah, I've enjoyed every minute of this. Um, I've had, you know, three of the best coaches we can possibly have asked for in a career, um, played with the best players in the world. So, yeah, in terms of um, all of that, I'm super grateful to, you know, be here and have been in the same club for nine years. I love you talking about that, not only the past, but what's ahead in the future. And we're going to tap into that a little bit. But I do want to stay on the past for just a second and get for both of you. What has been your favorite moment? If you could wrap something up and say, oh, I love being the like, this is my favorite moment being a part of the rain. And this is what I think of as um, that defining moment for us. Do you guys each have one? Is it hard? To, I'm sure it's hard to pick one. You've been there for a number of years, but um, does something stick out? year two and three combined yeah i would say the same thing year two and three for us as a as an organization and as a group of players that we had i mean it was just phenomenal we we went and beat them for two years at the at memorial um the players that we had the coach obviously that we had the um style of play i think we really changed the landscape of women's football here in in America um, and we did it kind of like not really like kind of under the radar but not like obviously we had 2013 which was just you know a, 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 just a thing um, <laughs> I just don't want to talk about that um, but the way we bounced back and the way that Laura to be fair to her yeah. learned what she learned in year one and then made the right made the right trades, made the right sign-ins, put the right balance together for us to kind of dominate the way that we did for two years. Like, don't get me wrong, I know we didn't win a championship, but what I will say where I've been brought up from and the way that we won the league those two years, like we just we just annihilated the entire league, right? Okay, fine, championship, one-off game, whatever, but we, we, had, we just dominated the entire league for two years. And, you know, that's not easy to do you know, and obviously North Carolina has been exceptional as well. And so for me, they're the two teams that have always kind of been in this league, just the teams that have been a step above the rest of the league when they were on kind of form. And it was just so fun. Like we enjoyed, we enjoyed every single day at training. You know, we had so much fun. Like, wow, we could get into some stories. We won't, but we could. Um, and you know we just yeah we had so much fun but when we got on that line and when we went to play our game you know we were just we had fear people didn't want to come and play against us you know and I think we've lost that and we're trying to get that back hence like what we're doing but um for me those two years yeah. Uh, the, the best years of probably my entire career, really, to be and honest. And as players and athletes, like, that's what you, you know, you strive for, for one, want to be a part of. So I think for me, those two years have been super special as well. And, you know, we still have, like, group techs with originals. So, yeah, the OGs, you know, sure. like, it, it just doesn't die out. So that's yeah. pretty cool. And I think something that, you know, we love to yeah, do yeah. here as well. Mm -hmm. I, I remember you saying, I think it was 2014, that year, well, just that uh, – the, the playoffs came and you were like, I thought we won the league. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't understand. I was so confused. She was like, wait, what? We have playoffs? Like, mm -hmm. I thought this, this is for the, yeah, we went into playoffs and they were like, this is for the league. I was like, wait, we've already won the league. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, no, 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 no. We haven't won the league. I was like, well, we have because we've been top <laughs> like six games ago. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a – um that was interesting for me, but I still, obviously, I'm still really good friends with Kimmy, Kimmy Little. I mean, we both are. Yeah. But, um, I still speak to her all the time, and I'm just like, I don't care what anybody says. We won, <laughs> we, we won the league twice. I said, I'm not listening to that crap. We won. You know, we did it is Blocko because he brings it up all the time. All the time. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> um, that's true. All right. You gotta love that. That's what makes that club so special. I remember. I, you guys know I didn't play in the league for very long, but I was there those two years that you guys had that midfield that I would hold up as the best midfield to ever play in NWSL. It was 
outrageous what yeah. you just and Kim could do in front of Keelan and the interchange of you guys and you have Lou behind you. Like you guys were so good and it really pissed me off because we <laughs> couldn't ever, nobody could do anything against me, right? Like you guys were so good. So I love that you bring up those memories because it's important, I think, where we're at in NWSL to share what we've been through and and the teams that were and how great of teams they were. No, 100%. I always feel that sometimes the women's sports, you can just get stuck talking about like the now and the, the kind of what's happening right now and you you don't give credit to what has happened before. Um, you know, you see it back home as well. Like right now everyone talks about Chelsea and City, but no one ever remembers just how good Arsenal were. Like Arsenal were back home like a phenom. And, you know, I think we forget that, yes, we're moving in the right place, but you have to keep the history because it tells its story, you know. And um, and it's good for us because yeah. we can always go back to that point and go, you know, we There's want to, yes, yeah. we have those standards and that's who we are and we are still obviously um, trying to find our way back there. But... And that's what we want, right? Like, yeah. we just want to keep those standards. Yeah. We want to we talk win about the league. It. Yeah, all the time right now. There's just, like, a transition. We have a lot of young faces coming in and, you know, with really bright futures. But having to, you know, teach them the ways of rain, yeah. I think, has been really important and been a really fun job this year. And just, like, yeah. you know, what we stand for. And for us this year in particular, like, we're also trying to get that back from the senior players, but also kind of, you know, embed it with the younger ones, like, right now so when we all move off that they continue to have that standard yeah and we have to be true to ourselves as well like of course we have a new kind of branding now and a new and a new look with or rain coming in and, and taking over but we're still this this team and this group that has such a rich, rich history um of success for one but also you know, when people talk about the rain, they always talk about our culture and what that is and how it works. And that is so much kind of it's embedded in us as well. And when we get that right and, and what is acceptable on and off the field from our group of players and what do we stand for and and what do we fight for? It's so in, important to us and it always has been. And, and we have to just kind of make sure that we keep sending that message to the young ones coming through because they're very good. They're going to be great. Um, but they have to have that information, right? And that help to understand how we work, what we fight for, both on and off the field. Which I think is always uh -huh. the hardest part. It's like the last key for success with teams because you can bring in all the talent you want, but if you guys can't get along on and off the field, it's just not going to be successful. Yeah. And it's so great we've gotten to this point in NWSL where we can marry those two, right? And the longevity of the league is bringing these veterans and the tradition in with these new fresh faces. Um, well, you guys, we already talked to you for 20 minutes. Can we have five more minutes or 10 more minutes? What do you, what can you give we're us? Because we've wait, got quite one. one. Yeah, we're easy. We can do 10. We can do 10. We're going to do 10. Jeff, hit them with the next question. I think we should dabble into some off the field stuff with these two. Yeah, I think, um, well, Lauren, you, you've done, um, I think you've talked a little bit about this, but sustainability is a big thing for you. And you've, um, you've got the mad travel kits, which uh, maybe you could just give everybody the brief version of what that is. And, uh, yeah. you know, I, I think it's, it's cool. I mean, we want to kind of obviously promote that, talk about it a little bit. I know you've yeah. kind of introduced it to the, the rain team and the, the big goal is kind of taking that wider, right. To, to yeah. make everybody aware of their footprint. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think, for me, the backing of the club has been the best. Like they also are very, you know, supportive of us doing this. And like within the club, we're doing a lot of sustainability as well. Um, and then an individual project that I had was the Mad Kits, which I just took a poll with the girls to see like what we used most when we traveled. And then I just reached out to companies that did something that was an eco alternative. Um, and I got over like 30 companies that were so excited to be involved. And we kind of made this huge kit that, um, yeah, heading into preseason, we kind of handed out to all the girls. And so for, you know, this year, we'll be able to travel when we do um, sustainably. And yeah, I think the, you know, the bigger goal is to get within the NWSL, but then I'm looking to get into other sports and, you know, bigger tournaments as well. So logistically, I'm still working out how that looks. Um, I want to be able to kind of sell them here too within our 
own stadium and stuff like that. And um, yeah, and move into other teams, other sports when I can. So yeah, it's been a fun off the field project that I've been doing. And I think um, it's just been nice that the girls have been so supportive, but also like want to learn more. And then you can also see them growing in their sustainable journey as well. And it's, it's huge in the club. Like we do so many different things now just within our club. That's been like really cool to see change. Yeah. And I, um, I think it's so cool. I would totally buy one if you're ever <laughs> selling those. So I need to get one of those, those stasher bags, those reusable plastic bag <laughs> things. Um, I have a few of those. I think they're the best. I'm like, why haven't we, we, we've been using these forever. Yeah. They're honestly the best. Like you can pop popcorn in them. You can cook with them. It's so cool. So yeah. And I think the girls have really bought into it and are excited as well. And they've been really supportive of me throughout the whole thing. Yeah. Jess, I, I know that we're just coming off of uh, Mental Health Awareness Month, going into Pride, two uh, months that mean a lot to you. And I know you did, did some talking about right. mental health awareness. And I'm just curious from your perspective, um, what do you want to share with everybody? What Show, show us the TJ Maxx finds. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, just what do you want to share with everyone? Because as Lou said, you are passionate out on and off the field. Um, so just how do you take care of yourself? How do you take care of your mental health? Um, you know, I actually, yeah, this one. <laughs> um, <laughs> I actually put a lot of work into my mental health. Um, I think, you know, <laughs> we'll keep saying it, but like this, this group and this, this kind of club and the way that we work, we're so open about this stuff because we know how important it is. And we all actively um, kind of encourage everybody to just be more honest and open with how they feel and what that looks like. And then how you can help process those emotions. Um, because I feel like, you know, we're in, we're in a world where, um, and especially the, our sporting world specifically is just so demanding for one, but also the, you've just seen it with uh, Naomi in the, in the um, French Open okay. as well, that people just think that we are just not humans and that we don't matter and what we feel we don't matter because we play this sport and we're so fortunate to play this sport and just kind of live this life. And we are very fortunate. We know that. Um, but then it, it people think that that kind of counteracts then how we feel and what emotions we feel and what goes on inside our head and how we're supposed to cope and deal with everything that goes on. And then like separate to that, we also have families and we have friends and they have stuff that's going on that will always affect us because before we are athletes, we are humans, right? And that is something that always gets overlooked. And we're very, very, we're very, how can I explain this? Like we make sure here that that doesn't happen because it's not right. And so we are very open with, yeah, what that looks like. We want to like, try like, normalize it, I guess. We do want to try and normalize it. And, you know, I did a talk the other day with, with Prince William and, and kind of Harry Kane. And, you know, my kind of key message was it's, we have to be, I have no issues in coming out and being like, yes, I speak to a therapist and yes, I speak to people that can help me be okay in the moments that I'm not okay. Right. And that we need to normalize that conversation. Um, we have a team psych now. We have well. a team psych. It's been as great. Well. Yeah. Mariah, she actually played for the Reigns. Oh. Oh. Yeah. She oh. understands. Oh, yeah, Mariah she's married yep. now, but. Yep. Bullock. Yeah. Oh, great. Very name now. Yeah. So she's with us, and that's yeah. huge. massive. Yeah. Massive. Knows exactly what we go through as athletes, yeah. in particular with the rain as well. Yeah. So um, that's been a lovely addition, I think, for us. And yeah. And, and we we all very you know like we'll sit down and and just be like, Lou, like, are you okay? Like, do you need to talk about anything? Like, how you feeling? And I think the, the best question you could ever ask is how are you feeling? Like, what do you feel? And whatever you are feeling, it's totally fine. And we can figure it out. Like, that doesn't matter, you know? And I feel once you have opened those conversations in like that kind of way, people feel a lot more comfortable um, in just saying how they feel and not feeling bad for feeling how they're feeling like we have to like get away from that and i think we can really help that 
I've always said we have platforms, we have huge platforms, and we have to use it for good. We have to. Otherwise, you know, our career is great, but it's what we do off the field that will be far, far, far more impactful. Yeah. Ugh. Guys, you're doing great. You are doing such good things, both of you, and as a collective as well with, with your squad. Um, one more question before, Jeff, we get into the the game we have for you guys, which I know you guys are excited about. <laughs> <Great>. um, <laughs> we, I, I'm just curious. You've got a lot of big names coming in. <laughs> A lot of big names coming in this summer, and um, Jess, you've played with a number of them. What can people expect? How do you integrate these big names into your club and keep what you were saying, that um, culture of the rain with the integration of these new players? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be tricky. Um, talk but, a lot about it quite often. But we actually. talk about it a lot because, you know, if, if you just kind of – pretend that it's not going to be difficult to kind of transition everybody in, then you're not being honest. And the most important thing is that you understand that, yes, the transition of bringing all these players in and trying to get everybody to play together is going to be a process. But we all have to accept that it's going to be a process and we have to work at it together to get it to work. And we're, yeah, we're starting those conversations already, um, you know. And the reality of it is, is we have... We are going to have a phenomenal team of players and it is up to us as a group collectively to ensure that the team still comes first. And then once we get on that page, and I think we'll be fine because you have a great group of girls, um, yeah. then the players will stand out individually. But we're not gonna we're not going to achieve what we want to achieve if we are not a collective first. But I'm not worried about that. Yeah, and I think you touched on it. Like a lot of our culture and like what we stand for is player led. Yeah. So I think, um, and that's why I talked about the young ones coming in, learning all this stuff. Because as a collective, we just help these players come in, right? And you know, this is the way we run. This is the way we work. This is the way we're successful. And I think yeah. because we run that, yeah, um, it helps. So I think you know, having them come in and we're going to be able to integrate them like that. I think will be a little bit easier. And I think at the end of the day, we've talked about this yeah. multiple times that we have a championship standard that we want to like hold all of ourselves to. So you know, you got to bring them in, and you know, this is where we want to be. And I think that's where they want to be. So I think our you know motives and you know goals are all the same. So it's just having yeah. you know as a collective to get there together. I think ultimately too, um, you know, these players are coming to us for a reason. Right, they totally. They, every, they want to play for the rain, which is huge. They want to play with each other. You know, like I speak to Eugenie all the time. We're good friends. I know Mara. We speak, and even when Rose just came in last week, everyone is excited to play with everybody. Yeah. You know, like me and it's Rose are sat mm -hmm. next to each other, and we're just like, oh, it's going to be so much fun, yeah. right? And it's the same. <laughs> Eugenie is like, I can't wait to play with you guys. It's going to be so much fun. And so the respect for each other as as players is already there, right? And and because we have that respect for each other, like we know that this group, everybody is good and everybody is going to bring their own attributes to us, then for us to kind of gel and make sure that the attributes works for the collective it's, I don't think it's going to take that long. I mean, we already saw how good Rose is and how great she can be for us, will be for us. Uh, and then it's just up to, you know, me and Rose or Lou and Rose just figuring out the finer details yeah. to make sure we allow Rose to be the best that she can be for us. And we're going to have everybody on the same page with that. But it will take time. Yeah. Of course, it will take time. And we know that. But we're not worried. We're just super excited because we trust our culture. Yeah. We trust yeah. our culture. And our, the expectations are going to be really high. Like, they have to be. We're bringing yeah. in, a you know, one of the best squads we've probably ever seen in the NWSL. But mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day, it's being patient because still we're human. You know, everyone yeah. thinks, well, we can just, you know, drop them in and everything's going to be fine. So I think being patient is probably going to be another thing that we just – have to you know let let them get in feel some of them yeah. never played in this league it's different it's different than a lot of things that they've been a part of so yeah being patient and just helping them be their best yeah i think also 
we have to respect the NWSL when we say that we're not just going to be able to drop these yeah. players in and it work because the NWSL is not going to let that yeah. happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's the best league in the world. It is yeah. super, super competitive. It is not going to be that easy that you're just going to drop these players in and go, off you go. That, that's the beauty of it. That's why we love this league because the other teams are going to be like, hell <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. And so it it would be really, really naive from everybody to think that that is going to happen because it's not. Because this league, we would not be doing it. We would not be doing giving it its credit if people actually think that that's going to happen. And we know, yeah, more than anybody, and that ain't going to happen. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You guys are so great. We didn't even get to um, let me tell you about my best friend. <laughs> um, so, and I don't want to take up any more of your time unless you guys want five minutes rapid fire. But Come otherwise, on. it's going to be funny. We'll have a good laugh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you hit him with the first one. So, so basically, Lou, if we ask you a question, you're answering for like, um, we'll, we'll direct it as something about Jess and vice versa. So um, we'll see We'll see the best friends. We'll see how much you guys know about each other. I already know who's gonna win this one. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm worried. All right, so how about, so Jess, Lauren has two career NWSL goals? Yes. Um, who, I know, who is- Sky Blue and Chicago. <laughs> Oh, oh wow. <laughs> didn't even get the question out. Run a free kick down right. Beep, 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 buzz up, buzz up. Okay, bonus if you know what year the first goal was scored. Oh, I hope we're still here. No, we're still here. No, we're still here. Maybe 2000. Trent Helper. I don't even know. <laughs> I'm going to go 16. Ooh. 15. <laughs> yeah. Second try. Fifteen. Don't worry, that um, okay. This doesn't count. I still. Um, all right, that was good. That was like you gave us both goals. We were Sharp. only going to ask you for one, so <laughs> I feel like we have to. We might I have to give very you very awesome. <laughs> Bonus. Um, Lauren Jess has over a hundred caps for Wales. Who did she play her first cap against? And bonus, <laughs> if you know the year. <laughs> Honestly, I have no idea. Switzerland. Just, just you, just guess. Switzerland. Uh, yeah. <gasps> I probably have a jersey. <laughs> oh my God. You got it. <laughs> she doesn't know. No, that's Switzerland. She had a little help, Jordan. She had a little help. <laughs> oh, I didn't see it. Sorry. I was too excited. I was like, how did you get that? <laughs> how did you get that? Yeah. You to be honest, one. I don't know the year. So that was a difficult question. I don't know the uh, year. Got my first cap. 2006. <laughs> oh God! <Six. laughs> oh God! Oh God! Oh God! We've been going a long okay. time. <laughs> um, all right, so Jess, if you say you had a game tonight, what would be Lauren's pregame meal? <laughs> Give it her all the easy ones. This is not easy, but I'll tell you, it would be protein pancake <laughs> with new zest <laughs> and protein and the night before the. She makes them every day. And she, she literally has a pre-match meal before I've even opened my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like fucking like, cheese. Um, yeah. I'm like dead asleep. And this one's like mixing up her protein pancakes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what she has. Okay. I love it. Um, Lauren, Jess is on a shopping spree. She can only spend all her money at one store. What Top store man. is she going to? <laughs> Top man. <laughs> what is it? Best friends. I mean, look at this. Best friends. You guys got everyone right. We're going to include even that one. Top <laughs> man. Best, Top man. Best store ever. The best. Oh, my gosh. Guys. Okay, one last thing. You're going out to coffee. What's the other person ordering? Too easy. <sighs> Too easy. Too Go. easy. Dry macchiato. Mm-hmm. And sometimes she uses my phone for my coffee. Oh, latte <laughs> with a little bit of vanilla. <laughs> Does she do this? Every time. Every time. I don't know why. <laughs> Let's have a little bit of vanilla. I'm like, it's just a shot, you know? <laughs> oh, you guys. Foam from her, oh, from her milk. Because I, do, I feel bad asking them to foam up some milk for me to just pop the foam on. So I'm like, to take her foam. It's fine. <laughs> It's true friendship. Yes. You guys, this has been so much fun. Thank you for joining us and sharing so much. Um, 
yeah, I couldn't, I can't say thank you enough. Thank you so much. No, thanks for having, thanks for having yeah, us. This is yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed that. We're going to be right back reviewing the games over the weekend. And I'll talk to Jeff about what's going down in Florida. We'll be right back after this. Thank you. I'm here. Can you hear me now? Okay. Um, I don't know what's wrong with the ads, but we'll we're in commercial. Can you hear me now? All right. You just come back. The commercials aren't working. Nine points over the last week, 10 points overall through four games. What's happening in Florida? Yeah, look, everything's clicking for Orlando. Um, you know, early season, obviously, but two big wins. We talked about it a little bit last week on the, the front side of that, that stretch, but a nine-point week. I didn't get to confirm. I don't think they've ever had a nine-point week just, oh. just based on, on history. But, you know, for the context of 10 points in four games, it took 14 games to get to 11 points in 2019. So, you know, you start to kind of see the the tangible evidence of that turnaround that they've talked about, and, and we've seen it on the field. And look, I mean, I think from front to back, you have, you know, obviously, I think the headline grabber is, or grabbers, plural, Alex mm -hmm. Morgan, Sidney LaRue scoring goals. But, you know, you have... This this back line, including Ashlyn Harris, Aaron McLeod, even in, in one of those games, um, you look at this team that gave up a league record amount of goals in the previous regular season, and it's now a back line that's pitching shutouts and doing so with yeah. basic basically a right sided, ultra veteran, left sided, extremely young, and it's working. Phoebe McLaren obviously stepping up and. Um, I think it's just been, it's been a good blend. Look, there will be for every team, there's going to be bumps in the roads in the road and they yeah. have significant absences looming for the, I guess, potential Olympics or, you know, we'll, we'll assume that oh, they're still happening. Okay. So something to, to navigate, but look, I mean, they're off to a very good start and they look significantly better and they look like a, a true playoff contender. Yeah. What would you say, Jeff, who is the person that's being the biggest catalyst for their success? What is, who is that person? If you could pinpoint someone that it feels like it's revolving around their output and it doesn't have to be goals output, right? Um, there could be shot stopping output. It could be leadership output. Who is that per player for you? Well, I was going to say, I'm going to throw you a, a little bit of a curveball just from the conversations that I've had down in Orlando. And I think you have to give some credit here um, because he's taken criticism to Mark Skinner yeah. because yeah. I do think that there's been an adjustment where in 2019 there was, and, and he admits this, a sort of a steadfast sticking to this is how I want to play, this is how we'll play. And that didn't line up with one personnel, but two this league and, and how you kind of succeed in this league and can find success and win. So I think the willingness to adjust there 
um, is a huge one. Obviously, the players then have to to have that output. I do think that the the sort of leadership core of the team, um, when you look at those veterans from Ashlyn Harris, Ali Krieger, Alex Morgan, Sidney LaRue, obviously, um, mm-hmm. Marta, you know, has been there for several years now. That there is um, an ownership. Um, it, it, it's a different vibe in Orlando, yeah. is is how I've been saying it. Yeah, and I agree. I you know. Th- th- there's so many coaches in this league that I speak with um, preparing for games or have spoke with preparing for the draft. And Mark Skinner has so many great ideas he wants to implement. I think it is important to highlight that, um, but also highlight the ability to go route one. I know you've talked about route one this year and utilize those players because we've talked a lot about the output, you know, who is going to create for this team with a lot of players who can be that player, but have yet to step up in the club uh, aspect as the Orlando pride. So it shouldn't be a, a surprise that game changers like Alex Morgan, Sidney LaRue are the ones finding the, the back of the net consistently, but can, but can they keep this up? And, and let's just let's just say Olympics happen, but there's time before the Olympics still for some, some games and for things to happen. Yeah. Well, I think too, you know, we're finally, this is really the first, there there was a lot of, um, I guess hype is the term. I mean, there's a lot of conversation around Taylor Korniak and, and obviously Orlando drafting her so high, really high on her. And we didn't really get a 2020 by, by most standards. So, um, now seeing her in a, you know, a pride uniform in a, in a proper regular season um, and in an actual cup even that we didn't get last year for Orlando. So um, I think she's been very good. You look at that ball that she served to Alex Morgan, that that chip on the assist. And, you know, mm-hmm. the finish got the attention, I, I think a lot of attention, but obviously the, the service there from Taylor Korniak was, was great. So, I, you know, that's obviously a new addition from you know, the, the benchmark comparison being 2019, that's that's a pretty significant new addition. And then, you know, I do think I mentioned earlier, but Phoebe McLaren, I think, has gotten a rightful amount of attention on that back line as um, a quasi rookie, I guess we'll, we'll call them because they yeah. didn't really get a, a proper rookie season and has stepped up and, and defended in a way that, um, you know, the, the pride have needed in, in the past. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Um, but good things. You know, we've talked about the pride for a, a long time and I, you've written many ar- articles on Equalizer about what's happening there. Good and challenging. Right. And we've talked challenging words. We've talked good words about what's happening with the pride. And it's cool to see them after this week, pick up so many points and be sitting in a, in a spot where they're going into this next weekend top of the table. So, um, it, it's great to talk about them. And really, that's it. We, that's all we have here. We we took 35 minutes talking to uh, Lou and Jess, which was so much fun. So Jess, I think, I mean, Jeff, that's it for us. Uh, no, hopefully we'll have Lori back next week. I think she'll make a road trip by then. But this has been fun. Thanks so much for joining me and helping break down and, and chatting with those players for a little bit. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. All right, you guys, that's it for NWSL Live. We will see you back here next week, Tuesday, 5 p.m.